Welcome to Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. Join our host, certified clinical mental health counselor and Christian psychotherapist, Dr. Frida Cruz, and her guests as they discuss real-life issues and offer expert clinical advice and solid biblical application for any and all life situations. Now, here's the host of Time for Hope, Dr. Frida Cruz. Thanks for joining me and my guest for today, Dr. Frank Page, former full-time pastor and presently president and chief executive officer of the Southern Baptist Convention Executive Committee. Dr. Page and I will be sharing and interacting today and again next week related to his daughter's suicide, which he has chosen to write about in his book titled, Melissa, A Father's Lessons from a Daughter's Suicide. Stay with us as Dr. Page shares practical, pivotal truths that include the faithfulness of our sovereign God who can help lead you to survival, growth, and recovery, whatever your loss or loss is. Dr. Page, it's great having you on time Thank for you, Hope. Dr. Cruz. I'm sorry it has to be about what it's about, but I, in reading your book, I know there are many, many people out there mm. that the Lord will use the truths that you have put and the lessons that you have learned in yes. this book uh, to help them through. Uh, it might not be suicide they're going through, and you bring that out. Right. It might be another narrow passage or a dark season mm -hmm. of the soul that, or a loss uh, that they're passing through. My brother, my own brother, lost two children out of mm. three, one in open heart surgery and one was murdered. I'm sorry. And, uh, and I don't know about suicide, how that measures up to having a 19 year old murdered that mm -hmm. you can't solve the murder. Right. Uh, so uh, I'm sure he would appreciate yes. uh, the things that you have in the book. And as a counselor, I've, I've dealt with a good number of people mm -hmm. uh, that were suicidal in helping them yes. journey through it and and finally hear from them, I don't want to die anymore, I want to live. Amen. I've had that wonderful experience. Amen. And um, so, uh, but um, anyway, Let's start yes. uh, by you beginning to tell your story. Uh, you got a phone call. You were out in your sure. yard working, and it was the day after Thanksgiving, That's right? That's correct. What year was that? This was 2009. 2009. So three and a half years ago. Yes, and uh, you have you received a phone call. I did. I got a call, phone call. We had been having some family problems with our sweet little Melissa. She was spiraling behaviorally in an inappropriate way and we knew that, I knew that and so we had, uh, we're delighted that she did come eat with us on Thanksgiving Day even though it was somewhat was tense. Was she living with her husband She was with time? her husband, uh -huh. yes, but um, always close with us. She would mm -hmm. call us many times a day, see us uh, virtually almost every day so we stayed in close touch. But we had seen some spiraling downward of behavioral um, affectations and, and issues and so we knew something was wrong and I begged her, I said, honey, something is not right and she was under the care of a, of a uh, mental health professional and uh, she said, well, he says I'm okay and I said, well, honey, I know you better than anyone and you're not okay. Well, she's seeing a therapist and a professional? Yes, yes. yes. And she had for quite some time and she was uh, being medicated and uh, she had um, recently switched medications or they had switched them on her and that was not working well. And so uh, she called, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning and it was an odd call. I knew something was wrong. She said, Daddy, I love you. And I said, well, I love you, honey. She said, please tell mom and the girls, meaning her sisters, that I love them too. And that was a red flag, of course. And I said, well, honey, um, I'm not going to tell them. You tell them. I was trying to encourage her to make contact with them, of course. And she said, Daddy, I can't. I said, honey, why not? Daddy, I can't. I just can't. I love you. Tell mom and the girls I love them. Honey, you please call them. Daddy, I love you. Hung up. And uh, so I began texting her back, which is her preferred means of communication, as many young people do. And 
called her many times, no answer, no answer, no response. I call, started calling her husband, no response. And um, then I began to realize something is wrong. And about that time I got a call from a church member. And this was of course in Taylor, South Carolina, not far away. A dear friend called and said, Pastor, there's uh, an ambulance at your daughter's house. What's going on? I don't know, but I will find out. And so I rushed over there of course immediately and was greeted by police officers and uh, sent to the hospital. And that's how I became aware of my daughter's suicide. And she was gone. She was gone. Went to the hospital. Dear friend in my church, a surgeon, was on duty at the time and uh, he had to come out and tell me that um, she didn't make it. And uh, so that was, a, that was obviously a horrible, horrible day, November the 27th, um, 2009. Did she use the medication uh, to take her life? What, uh, no, she didn't. She, it was a gunshot wound, which is atypical that's for very young women. That's very unusual for women, yes. But it's, uh, it's what she did, and uh, that ended it quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, so she didn't survive that gunshot, and it was uh, very difficult, obviously. I, you know, I, uh, it ended so quickly, and, uh, but the doctor said it was uh, an immediate uh, shot and, and ended her life immediately. There was no suffering beyond that point uh, for which we were grateful, but um, that's how she did it and that's how it happened so quickly from the phone call to the um, uh, to the hospital. She must have had it right there when yeah. she called she you. She must have. I, um, she must have. In ministering to suicidal people, I even had a pastor that I was seeing mm -hmm. and one day, and he moved to an um, out of uh, the area mm -hmm. and was uh, quite a ways uh, south of Spartanburg. And I received a call and he was, he had a shotgun loaded and mm -hmm. ready to pull it. Mm -hmm. And um, he called me though, which I'm very thankful Absolutely. for, and told me what he was going to do. His wife had gone to work and um, and he was sitting there with a shotgun loaded and he just thought that was the best way, you know, to get through all that he was mm -hmm. dealing with, like Melissa, mm -hmm. and going through. And so I kept him, first of all, I said, well, I've got to, I must call the police, uh, you mm -hmm. know, you can't, you just can't do this. And he said, you call the police. I can see them coming around the corner and I'll pull this gun. And I said, well, then I won't call them. We'll talk about it. And um, so I had one of my assistants call the wife. I, I had her number and everything. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'm not about to go back and go near him. He would he would kill me too. Whoa. And um, come to find, and, but she called her son and he immediately, he had heard from his dad and he picked it up in the telephone mm -hmm. call just like you did mm -hmm. with uh, Melissa. And um, the son immediately hit the road and I was keep holding him on the phone. But um, he had gassed every window in the house. Uh, he was going to set it on fire yes. uh, also. And he, he meant business. I kept him on the phone and the son was on his way and he was a, a big, strong young man. And he found one window that he could get in and that was a bathroom window. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, um, he made it to his father and uh, knocked him down and took the gun away from him and uh, wow. got him to a hospital. But uh, that just shows the range of people mm -hmm. uh, that, it, that suicide uh, yes. can reach. It As does. you say in your book, class, uh, financial standing, color, creed, it doesn't matter. It, it goes across all, uh, all of that. And uh, so being a pastor's daughter, being a pastor's daughter doing that, though, has caused you some grief, hasn't it? Well, it has. It certainly has. And, you know, um, people have been kind to me, Dr. Cruz, but many people do wonder, well, how could that happen to a pastor's daughter? Why couldn't you have gotten her help? Or I know the thoughts are there 
that you should have done something better or surely she should have been a more faithful Christian not to go through that kind of trouble. So I know those feelings are out there and thoughts are out there, but yes, it's problematic when it's a pastor's daughter. Well, are you aware uh, that Billy Sunday had a son that committed suicide, no. the great evangelist? No. Are you aware that Oral Roberts had yes. a son that committed yes. suicide? And there was yet an, um, another uh, outstanding uh, Christian leader that, um, I believe it was Bob Pierce with World Vision. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Yes. He had a daughter to yes. commit suicide. And there was yet another yes. uh, church uh, leader that I can't remember and most right recently, now. most recently, Rick Warren from and California. And of course, most recently, yes. Rick Warren, His son. Uh, who wrote uh, Purpose Driven Life. Yes, that's correct. So, um, and, it, and of course, uh, friends had to watch Abraham Lincoln for one year mm -hmm. to keep him from that's taking right. his, his own life. That's right, I just read his biography and that's true. He was very deeply depressed. Yes, and that is usually at the root of, is that what Melissa was being no, treated No, I mean, she certainly for? had problems with depression, but that we, we never found, and as a counselor you can identify with this, that there are people out there like Melissa who never received a specific diagnosis. Um, and all the treatment that she went through, and, and uh, we, there was never a treatment given, I mean, a, a diagnosis given to her. Um, and so it was, she had many, many issues, uh, behaviorally and uh, I think emotionally, but she certainly did have depression, but it was not to the extent of a, of a deep, um, uh, treatable um, um, depression that I know of. Mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor, of course I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist and all of that, just counseling and being with people. I did suspect, and would, since I met Melissa, mm -hmm. uh, suspect that there might have been some bipolar mm -hmm. disorder perhaps. there, uh, perhaps is right, uh, and you'll never know, will no, you? No, no. You'll uh, never know. There, uh, they're telling me that it's time for a break, but we got, we have two weeks to talk about okay. this. So yes. we'll come back and get down uh, to where, uh, it, what I would call uh, a grief that, that you immediately began to experience. Yes. And you will always experience yes. to some degree. So we want to talk about right. that. And we will be right back. The headline read, Ex Enron Vice Chair Commits Suicide, and it was referring to the suicide death on January 25, 2002, of J. Clifford Baxter. Baxter chose to do what at least over 38,000 people chose to do in America in 2010, the most recent year that such data was available. The assumed reason that Baxter took his life is the reason all suicidal people choose to end their lives. He became unable to cope with his increasing stress. Baxter had just been named, along with 28 other former and current Enron executives, as a defendant in a federal lawsuit. The Precipitating suicidal stress is not the same for everyone. For some, it might be a recent divorce. For others, it can be the recent loss of a loved one. For adolescents, it can be the breakup of a love relationship or the fear of failure. Some are unable to tolerate the physical pain or disability of a terminal illness. For many, it is the persistent battle with a deep depression that refuses to let up. All suicidal people are hopeless and see no other way out of their present distress. Their focus becomes escape or relief. Many myths abound related to suicide, and I want to note several common ones. One, people who commit suicide are crazy. The truth is that only a small percentage of people who take their lives are mentally ill or psychotic. Two, people who talk about suicide won't do it. The truth is about 80% of suicidal people have talked to someone about killing themselves. 
three, all persons who attempt suicide really want to die. The truth is that suicidal people can be torn between wanting to live and wanting to die, and an attempt is often a plea for help. And how can you help? If someone has attempted suicide or even hints to you they are considering taking their lives, don't be afraid to talk with them about it. Giving them a listening ear can provide an opportunity for them to talk about their feelings, thoughts, and fears. In response, let them know that you care and encourage them to get the professional help and spiritual direction they need, including pointing them to the help available from their Creator God, who invites them to look to Him and His strength to see them through their dark season or passage. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. Our guest for today is Dr. Frank Page, and we're talking about his book, Melissa, A Father's Lessons from a Daughter's suicide. And Frank, I promise that we are going to go to the beginning uh, after you learned that your daughter had uh, completed. It wasn't just a suicide attempt. She had completed uh, her the suicide and she was gone. Yes. Uh, tell me about it. Well, as I said earlier, a, a physician in the church was on duty at the hospital and came in and told me of the of the success that she did have with the suicide. And uh, he left at that point and I was in the room alone. My wife was on the way. She had been driving out of town and I was uh, by myself. I got on my knees, Dr. Cruz, and I prayed and I quoted scripture. Now I know the Lord doesn't need to hear scripture, but I needed to say it. And scripture that I'd memorized over the years came back to me. And I just cried out to the Lord's scripture, such as Job 121. The Father giveth, the Lord taketh mm -hmm. away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I said that with all my heart. And then I quoted John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also in me. My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and I prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Isn't it wonderful how the yes. Holy Spirit brings them forward? Wrote back that we scripture I memorized as a child. And and so I just called out to the Lord and uh, the Lord ministered to my heart. And I'll have to say now years later, three and a half, almost four years later, uh, God has never given me more grace than I need, but He's never given me less. And my wife and I have experienced His touch. It's still painful. It still hurts. I still struggle with it sometimes, but He's been good. He's been faithful in healing and helping. And uh, that's why I wrote the book is to help people see that Christ is our source of hope and help. And you can get help from a lot of places to a level, to a degree, but not like you can get from Christ. You know, sometimes when I hear what has happened to people and know that they're not Christians, that they're not believers, and I think, how in the world mm -hmm. can they make it? Uh, yes. are, or are they, how are they making it mm -hmm. through such a tragedy, uh, such a, a dark season if they don't know the Lord. Right. I, I, I have, I fail to understand that. I fail to understand that too. And I had someone, I was on another television or radio interview not long ago and someone said, well, Dr. Page, we hear what you're saying to people of faith. What do you say to people not of faith? And I said, I say the same thing. They need to find hope and help in Christ. He's the only source. And that might have source. been why it happened yes, in the first that's place. Yes, right. that that's God right. allowed it. Uh, you That's know, right. But it does turn some people away from the Lord. It does. People get angry. People, um, you're right. Uh, people say, I blame God for this. I've never blamed God for this. God didn't cause this to happen. He did allow it, as you've said, said rightly. Yes. Uh, but I believe He allowed it so that little Melissa could have peace finally. And because He knew that glory could come to His kingdom, the people could be reached. And so, I wrote the book so that my sweet daughter's death would not be in vain, that it would reach. Uh, Dr. Huckabee, who, uh, Mike Huckabee, who wrote uh, the foreword for the book, mm -hmm. said to me in a private letter, he said, Frank, Melissa will touch more people in her death than mm -hmm. you will in your life. Yeah. I said, oh, Lord, may mm -hmm. it be so. Yeah. 
Isn't that a wonderful oh, yes. way of looking at it? Yes. And uh, when God allows uh, these kinds of things uh, or bad things to happen to good people, mm -hmm. as, as it has been said, he's got a purpose. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't let it happen if there was not a right. purpose right. uh, uh, to come out of it. We're responsible to find out what that purpose That's is correct. and how he would use that. That's it correct. might be just personally. For pers uh, Romans uh, 3, I believe, 5, uh, is it 4 and 5 that says that uh, there are three things that are supposed to come out of this. Perseverance, mm -hmm. learning to hang in there when things mm -hmm. get tough. Character, mm -hmm. uh, that's being conformed into the image of Jesus that's Christ right. and hope. That's right. What would we do without those no three things? Mind. We need them desperately. We need them desperately, don't we? Um, I, uh, my own father, term terminally ill, um, and his was a long lingering terminal illness, but we knew he would die, and he knew he would die of, of the illness. And he was getting lower and lower, and um, I was sitting by his bedside, as I did so much during those days, and he said, I, I have a question I want to ask. He was a deacon in a, in a Baptist Church. He said, um, I have a question I want to ask you. I said, okay, Daddy. He said, um, if I were to take my life, would I still go to heaven? Mm. And uh, there was a gun on his wall over there. He always, uh, he had retired from Florida State Prison. And um, I said, you would go to heaven, Dad, but that's not the way God would you, uh, would want you to end. He would not want you to end your life. He wants you to wait upon Him That's right. uh, and the way He wants your life to That's end. Right. And He took that. And then I was able to tell my mother and sisters that were there all the time, get rid of every gun mm -hmm. ar around here. Yep. Anything, this is, you know, he's, he's thinking along these lines. Yes. But again, um, again, you didn't get to have that opportunity. I didn't. I so wish I had. She had never threatened suicide. And that was the amazing thing. You know, it's unusual. Most times people talk about it or threaten it. She hadn't. And so not until that phone call came that I realized uh, she is thinking of something. And mm -hmm. so I knew but then. She, by nature, though, she was a, an impulsive person, oh, wasn't she? Oh, yes, she was. She was impulsive. And, and that was one of the things you had to deal yes, with. Yes, we dealt with, with her, her So what life. would you expect if she were going exactly. to do something like that? Exactly. Yeah. She might not have thought about it the day before. Right. You did say in your book that she, she at Thanksgiving, she was kind of, uh, you could tell she was yes, downcast. out of control. Out of, uh, yeah, and you, yes. is that when you talked with her? Yes, I did. I talked to her that day and the day before. Yes, and so uh, I know you feel better when you think about it that you did. I did try. Uh, uh, that you did everything you could do. Everything and, I knew uh, to do. Yes, everything that you knew to do. Well, we're going to we're going to close out right. for this week and pick up. Thank uh, you. Uh, for next week, but I have something to share with the viewers yes. uh, as as uh, we close out. So you just hang in there right, with me, you. okay? Uh, and I do have a prayer request. Uh, dear Dr. Frieda, I am ready to give up on Christianity. We, we don't like these kinds of... We are, appreciate uh, people being honest with us and sharing something. Uh, like this, but I don't like to hear of people that are ready to give up on Christianity because I can't find peace. Um, I struggle with fear, worry, anxiety, and depression, as well as many physical problems. I don't understand why this is happening to me. There are many things in our lives that we will we'll never understand this side of heaven. Um, so you're not alone in, in this. I feel I can't continue to battle this day after day. Please pray for me. We've done that, and we've also followed up on that uh, with this viewer. And uh, she's, um, she's getting proper treatment, proper medical help, and so forth. 
but we pray for each and every person that asks us to pray with them. And we encourage you to send in your prayer requests to Time for Hope um, because we appreciate the fact that you trust us with what's going on in your life and that we can take it to our Heavenly Father with whom nothing is impossible. Possible, And then I share a note of encouragement. I watch Time for Hope, dear Dr. Frieda, I watch Time for Hope whenever I get a chance. I appreciate the work you do so much. Thank you for that. Thank you for having the program Time for Hope on television. And that's great encouragement to me and my staff to get those kinds of um, notes coming in. And we appreciate your sharing uh, that with us. So I, I say make sure that you stay with us because next, uh, next week, join us again as Dr. Page and I discuss um, his book, Melissa, A Father's Lessons from a Daughter's Suicide. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for a contribution of any amount to the Time for Hope ministry. To receive our free fact sheet or our guest book or both, you may call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304 or visit our website at timeforhope.org. When you call or write, prayerfully consider a donation to our ministry. Our ministry's mission is to offer hope to discouraged and hurting people. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support this ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you do this, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers seeking help and hope for their situation. This will also enable us to inform and inspire some viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. To see this program again online, go to our website or search for Time for Hope TV on YouTube, iTunes, and Facebook. Join us next week for more on today's topic. You did move into a new normal, didn't you? Indeed. Life will never be the same again. That's and I to I've told many a client that, look, even in normal losses, life will never be the same again, but it can be good again. It can be good it again. It can be good again. That's correct. So tell us how it can be good again. Well, it again. can be good again because you, you, you learn to depend upon the Lord more and more and more. You tr if you're dealing with grief in a healthy way, you begin to realize that God can use your situation to help a lot of other people. And that's why I've written the book. That's why I do reach out. I do hear from so many people because I know that grief can be healthy or unhealthy. When it's healthy, you seek ways to minister to other people. I was reading the other day in my daily Bible reading, the book of Job, and it says in the latter part of the book, and Job's captivity was turned when he prayed for his friends. And many people need that hope of realizing that the bad things that have happened can be used by God for good. And that's good grief. That's healthy grief. And that's what I hope uh, we've, we're, we're getting to. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.